Hey guys, Dave and Alex here. Thank you for joining us on another video. Today we're going to take a look at these vintage collection figures that interact with the Razor Crest. We're going to be opening all these figures here, so stay tuned. We'll be right back. So this video is a follow-up to our Razor Crest unboxing video. If you haven't seen that, please check it out on our channel. It's the video uh, immediately preceding this one. And uh, we did that last week. We opened up our Razor Crest, and it's awesome. Please check it out. Yeah, uh, it was an amazing unboxing. I didn't even know we were going to get one. And uh, I still honestly can't believe that we have one. It was very unexpected, and it's awesome. So now in this video, it's kind of like a kind of a little bit of a checklist kind of video for figures that you'd want to get with your Razor Crest, because uh, the Razor Crest comes with three figures already. Uh, it comes with the um, Din Djarin right here with the soft goods cape, and then it also comes with a off-world Jawa Elder. And uh, he comes with um, the two shotguns, a pistol. He comes with a little like knife thing that he used to cut open the egg. He comes with a cut egg and a closed egg. And then we also have Grogu from the Razor Crest, uh, which is an all new sculpt from the normal wave Grogu. And probably the biggest difference is also uh, because it has a vac metalized pram and the uh, normal release does not. All right, so let's get started opening these figures. Uh, we're going to take turns. Um, Alex, you go first. Which one do you want to open? I'm going to open probably Bo-Katan Kreese right here. Absolutely amazing looking figure. Um, also awesome card from the Mandalorian. You see the pose there in the picture. Looks like it was taken from that episode where they're on the Imperial Cruiser where they, where they um, from Season 2. Were they uh, still the Imperial Cruiser? Um, that's what it looks like to me. It could be from the season finale, too, when they're on the Moff Gideon's ship. Uh, so, um, really cool card back. And then on the back, Bo-Katan is VC-226. And then you have the additional uh, figures from that wave in the pictures. All right, here is Bo-Katan out of the uh, card and blister pack. And I gotta say, I'm actually blown away with this figure. I'd, I wasn't expecting it to be as good as the Black Series figure since everything is easier with Black Series since it's a bigger scale. But I gotta say, I was blown away. I think this figure is way better than the Black Series figure was. And the head sculpt is like, like 10 times better for me. The hair looks way better. Uh... The, app, the paint applications look better, especially on that belt. And it's just all around a better figure from the Black Series one, I think. Yeah, I agree with you. This figure is awesome. And then there are so many points that are a lot better than the Black Series figure, especially the colors, uh, the belt, the leather look on the belt and holsters is a better color here. Her hair is a better color. And the face sculpt is just amazing for 3.75 inch scale. I mean, wow. And the helmet is not, it's a interchangeable, so uh, you can pop the head off and then put the helmet head on if you want. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, great figure. Oh my gosh. Okay, for the next figure, I'm going to choose the Mithril. This figure is from the latest uh, vintage collection wave, and in our area it's been really spotty. It's been hard to find. Got lucky, came across this one at a store, and it was the only one they had, so got really lucky. Um, this latest wave of the uh, vintage collection has just been, yeah, it's just been impossible to find in our area. So uh, here we got a cool looking uh, card back. This is from season two. Nice image of the Mithril there. It looks like he's at that control panel uh, station that he was uh, working for Grief Karga at. I believe that's where that photo is taken. 
Um, awesome figure. Got a lot of accessories with this figure. And I love that blue head on him. They, they did a really cool job with uh, um, making him blue mithril looking. So we're going to get this figure take, taken out first. We're going to look at the back of the card. And he is VC225. Okay, before we get him out of the booster pack, I want to go over his accessories real quick. He comes with uh, binders at the bottom, a pistol, uh, the uh, tool, the... Um, I don't know what they call that tool in Star Wars uh, lore, but um, it's like the tool that they use to, to uh, open doors and do all kinds of different stuff with. And then he comes with uh, the uh, bounty puck which with his uh, hologram, so that's really cool. Okay, we've got him out of the card back and blister pack, and uh, really cool figure, a bunch of accessories. Um, here we got him posed up with the binders on. And Mandalorian with the um, bounty puck, which is really cool accessories. He also comes with the, as I showed you earlier, the little tool. It's really hard to kind of focus in on these accessories at 3.75 inch scale. And um, and then a blaster pistol that he, and those two items he used in season two. It's really cool that this figure came with those accessories, uh, additional accessories from season one and two. I really like this figure. The sculpt is amazing with his coat, and um, the head is really cool. With the, uh, it's almost like a reflective, almost like the carbonized finish that they put on some of the figures of the carbonized series. Um, a really nicely done figure, and I would love to see this figure in the black series at some point. Yeah, I think that figure is really cool. Um, the sculpt that they did on it is pretty nice. I like the head. Uh, paint applications it's kind of like a shiny shiny uh paint because he is a myth roll which is kind of like a fish species and uh i love the accessories that he comes with especially that bounty puck that is really cool uh we need one of those in the black series and then the paint apps on like the little like control units on like his jacket and stuff that's really nice as well oh and also spoiler alert pfft, Hey, Alex, what's your next figure going to be? I think next up, I'm going to choose Grogu, or as the card back says, the child. And here we have a pretty good card back, an image from season one, and he is in his pram there. Uh, we have the Mandalorian up there. And if we turn it around, we can see... Here, uh, the rest of the figures in the wave. This is VC-184. Um, and we have all the extra gunk on the back that nobody really wants and we don't really need. So yeah, let's go ahead and get this guy open. Alright, here is the child, or Grogu, out of the blister pack in his pram here. And I honestly think it looks pretty nice. I think he fits in the pram better uh, than the Black Series 1 fits in the pram. There's no, like, peg uh, or anything inside the pram, but he does have a little peg hole on his feet there. But I think he fits in there pretty nicely. Uh, put his hands on the sides there, and it looks pretty good. And um, also a thing with the pram that is not there with the Black Series 1, you can take the back off. I'm not sure why, because he isn't really seen with the back off in the show, but it's pretty cool he can take that off. And then inside, there's like a molded blanket in there, and it looks, it's, the mold is really good. It almost looks soft goods looking, but it's actually just hard plastic. But yeah. um, I thought it was soft goods at first when I first got it out. Yeah, it looks really cool. Really nice, really nice job on the pram. And then you can put this back on, and then you can also put the top on here which i'm not sure why you would want to do that unless you have some type of like battle scene set up and then i'm pretty sure grogu will fit in there with the pram closed it's kind of hard to snap it in you have to like i think you have to like lay him down in there if you want him to fit right uh and like make his arms not as extended and then he also comes with the little frog that he likes to eat she ate in um, season one of The Mandalorian and also the Book of Boba Fett. 
And just real quick, here's a size comparison between the Black Series uh, Grogu and the Vintage Collection Grogu. So you can see there, the Black Series one is a little bit bigger. And uh, just when you think uh, they, they couldn't make him any smaller, the Vintage Collection one is tiny. Yeah, I used to think the Black Series one was pretty small, but next to the Vintage Collection one, it honestly looks pretty big. Yeah. And they did an awesome job on the Vintage Collection one because, I mean, he has face details and, and uh, he has the little wrinkles on his forehead. And, um, yeah, it looks really good for, you know, that, that size. And just real quick, um, a little tip that we learned from our friend Boss Bounty is the stand for uh, Grogu's uh, pram uh, can be inserted into the back of these uh, carbonite blocks that came with the Razor Crest, and you can just pop them in that hole here, and uh, then that that gives you a floating carbonite block. Uh, so pretty cool tip there, and thank you, uh, Boss Bounty, for sharing that. All right, for our next figure, I'm going to choose IG-11. Now, this figure looks awesome. Um, really cool card back image of IG-11 from The Mandalorian. I believe it says, it's, well, it's definitely season one. I believe it's from the first episode where they raided the compound and found uh, Baby Yoda inside of it. But anyways, uh, this is an all-new figure, all-new sculpt. Uh, so they did not use like an IG-88 and just put uh, the extra stuff on him to make him IG-11, like that double bandolier. But uh, so this is this has a lot more articulation than the old IG-88 figures. So let's uh, take a look at the back real quick and we'll get him open. He is VC-206. And then there's some images from the, the reissue wave there. All right, so we got IG-11 out and he comes with two accessories. A, a looks like a modified pulse cannon and an E-11 blaster. And uh, they fit, and uh, he's got these figure, uh, fingers for his hands, and uh, they, you kind of have to just kind of finagle those fingers and get them into the guns. He has a bandolier that's soft plastic, and it does have like a leathery, nice leathery feel. And the articulation is just awesome on this figure. He has, you know, elbow joints, uh, the ankle joints, um, um, knee joints. I meant to say knee joints. <laughs> elbow joints and uh, uh, ball joints for his um, shoulders. Now, our elbow joints are extremely tight, and I'm, I'm really afraid to bend them right now. I think I'm going to have to soak him in some hot water to loosen those up. Um, I tried to bend them, and they would not move at all, so I was afraid that um, the elbow might snap off, or it might, the arms might snap off. He also has uh, two um, where his uh, sensors and eyes are. You can rotate those around separately, so that's really cool. The Black Series figure doesn't even do that. And then he has uh, articulation in the torso. Um, so it's really cool. You can uh, bend him over and then also side to side articulation. So the articulation is just awesome on this figure. Um, and he has all these um, and he has all these hoses and stuff on his legs. Looks really cool. Okay, we're down to two figures. Alex, which one are you going to pick? I'm going to choose the off-world Jawa right here. There is the card right there. Pretty nice card of uh, the off-world Jawa right here. Uh, I think this is when, uh, in Season 1, whenever uh, he was like shooting the blaster or... Shooting his little shotgun at uh, Din Djarin. Uh, shock blaster. Yeah, shock blaster. Now this one comes with both of the shock blasters. The CA-87 and then this like silver one. He comes with a closed egg and a pistol. And just to compare, here is the Razor Crest Off-World Jawa Elder. And he comes with that knife... He also comes with a opened egg, and then on the figure it is also a little different. He has some details on that little bandolier there as well. And then uh, probably the main difference with the card back is the uh, the card back, you know, itself. It's a different image, and then uh, the name pill also is different because this is the Jawa Elder and this is the normal off-world Jawa. Uh, here is the back of the card back, and it shows the rest in the wave. And this is VC203, 
And then we have the rest of the gunk that nobody likes. So let's go ahead and crack this guy open. Alright, here is the off-world Jawa, and sadly I couldn't get him to hold the egg. I'm sure you can get him to hold the egg, but I couldn't uh, get him to hold the egg great. It, it would just fall out of his arms. I couldn't get his arms close enough to do it. But he does look pretty ho cool holding the CA-87 Shock Blaster. Uh, and I think this figure is pretty nice for a Vintage Collection 1. Uh, the, uh, I, th I, I do think it looks a bit weird, though, having a soft goods, uh, a soft goods cloak or suit kind of thing, and then a plastic cape, but if they did make a, pla a soft goods cape, it would probably be, like, big and, like, flowing over the head way too much, and that wouldn't really be good because that's happened with other figures in the past before, so, uh, I kind of like how they did this, even though, to me, it doesn't really look right, but it, it's good enough. Yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. I, I like the combination of soft goods uh, body and then the plastic on the, for the hood. That way you get that accurately molded hood. And then he has the red eyes from the off-world Jawas. And the soft goods are nice and raggedy, which uh, makes it look really cool, I think. Uh, last but not least, he also comes with a tiny little pistol here that is like a gray... Just a gray metallic color. It's pretty small. Okay, our last figure we're going to open is Quill uh, from The Mandalorian Season 1. Awesome card back with that image there, and you can tell he's riding the uh, Blurg. And, um, yeah, one of my favorite characters from Season 1. I'm really sad to see, I, I'm really sad to see that he, uh, spoiler alert, got uh, killed at the end of Season 1 and was not in Season 2. Um, I would really like to have seen him in Season 2. Yeah, it was definitely one of my favorite characters from Season 1. So he, he's got a backpack, or a, like a pack here, and a gun for accessories. I don't think there's any tools, which is kind of weird. You would think that he would come with some of these little tools and stuff that he used to build and work on stuff. And then on the back, uh, we have uh, the card back, and he's VC227. And you can see there are some of the figures from uh, the newer white. All right, so we got him out and um, got his accessories on him. And what a really cool figure. And I think this is another example of the Vintage Collection figure being better than the Black Series figure. The colors are a lot better on this figure. Uh, the um, the mold, I think, is a lot better. And, uh, you know, the details are really good for a 3.75-inch scale. I mean, the face sculpt is awesome. I mean, overall, I think this figure is better than the Black Series figure. Now, his uh, hood his uh, hood thing here and goggles are not removable. And um, here's a close-up of his weapon I just have around his shoulder. And then his backpack is mounted. We put it on the back, and it looks really good on him. So, excellent figure. I just I, I like this figure a lot. The colors are really more show accurate, I think. And uh, looks great. Yeah, I think this figure looks really nice as well. Uh, I think the colors, uh, I agree that the colors look way better on it. Um, I like uh, the backpack is really nice. It has some good paint apps. Uh, the blaster, the little blaster that he comes with is good. It has a strap on it so you can put it around his arm like we have here. Uh, the head sculpt and face sculpt is really nice. I like how they, uh, they, uh, I like how they did that, and they uh, the paint apps on it are really good, where he has like the, the facial hairs and stuff like that. I think it's really nice. All right, so you might want to be wondering about the Boba Fett figure that was in the background of the figures here. And this is uh, Alex's custom book of Boba Fett figure that he made from a Force Link uh, Boba Fett figure. It's just a 5 POA figure, but we painted it up and... Kind of made a, bo a book of Boba Fett figure out of it. Yeah, it was originally a uh, Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett. We'll uh, put an image of it side by side so you can see what it used to be and what it is now. I think it's a pretty good... Uh, I think we did pretty good on it. Um, and I think it looks really nice. And now we have a like uh, very cheap uh, Boba Fett Instead of having to pay like $30 to get the Vintage Collection one, we're still going to try to get that one uh, for our collection. But this will do for now, and it also has soft goods, which is pretty nice. Unlike the Black Series one is going to have...
Really? Okay, so here is our display with the Razor Crest. We have all the figures posed out in front of the Razor Crest, and of course, we'll probably change it here, you know, periodically, different poses, different, might put some of the figures inside the Razor Crest, but for right now, we have them all displayed outside the Razor Crest, and um, <clears throat> there's one little, uh, kind of like Easter egg, where's the Jawa? Do you see him? So if you don't see him, he's up, look to the top right, and he's up by the engine. He's got one of the panels off and he's trying to steal some parts. So that's a little Easter egg that we put in there. Yeah, I think these figures look really cool uh, next to the Razor Crest. I think the Razor Crest looks really cool uh, by itself, by itself, but uh, with figures um, in it and around it, it looks even cooler. Yeah, guys, be sure to like this video. Uh, Subscribe to the channel. If you're not a subscriber, please, we'd love to have you as a subscriber. And leave us a comment down below. Tell us what you think about these uh, vintage collection Mandalorian figures that really go nicely with the Razor Crest. And that wraps up our video. Alex, take us out. May the Force be with you. Always. And this is the way. And I have spoken. <laughs>